So David, when you invested in Facebook, people actually thought you were crazy um, when you did that investment. Can you talk about what you're thinking about? What was, how does that play into your investment process? Almost every investment that you do that turns out to be really interesting at the time, a whole bunch of people think you're crazy because a lot of smart people can tell you when a startup is raw or early why it's going to fail. And by the way, if it's going to fail, those usually are the reasons. So you could go back if it failed and say, yep, yep, yep. And the real question ends up becoming, do you have um, the instincts and the passion and the understanding of how it, it could develop and the understanding of the entrepreneur and the opportunity to understand why it won't fail. And so early on in my career, you know, I looked at one of my first companies, ironically, that I passed on was a company called Baidu, <laughs> a small little company at that time, unknown, yeah. a great entrepreneur named Robin Lee. Um, and I did a bunch of due diligence, excellent due diligence. I did the best due diligence. I talked to Yahoo China and Google China and Sina, the founder of Sina and the head of search at Sohu, all the players that would be in that space. And they all gave me the reasons why it wasn't going to work. And at that time, I was sort of young and why I naive, and this was my first one. I said, okay, it's not going to work. And lo and behold, you know, Robin's a great entrepreneur, fascinating idea, disruption in the space, all the things we look for, and I walked right past it. And so I think you have to get some experience and get to the point of understanding you're going to hear all the reasons no, and so how do you decide which ones are the reasons yes? Mm -hmm. What do you look for that, that other people may miss or that other people don't see? Yeah, so I think you have to sort of think about the things that are one level down um, and not, not ignore the stuff that's obvious, right? I mean, because those can be the reasons. And so, you know, uh, in the early days of Facebook, the concerns were that um, young kids were fickle and that they were going to flip. Um, or that it would never go past colleges. And MySpace um, was bigger at the time, too. And MySpace was dramatically bigger, probably two, three, four times, uh, by that time, five or six times bigger. Um, and, you know, there was a lot of people who said, they'll never catch MySpace. It'll never be that way. And so, I mean, I think you have to then look at the next level down is, one, certainly understanding Mark Zuckerberg and seeing his passion and understanding of that user base. Two, looking at the engagement and just the depth at the college level that was going on there. And then three, having an understanding that, uh, one, um, college is a magic time, right? It's this four years where you're captured with this group, and yes, you're young and fickle, but you want to be part of this, this um, a college experience and there's upperclassmen that are all using something so what are you going to do not use it and, and then you graduate from that and you're going in and you're having first job moving to a new city and so you're actually bringing all those friends and all those experiences and now you have money and now you are experiencing things and so it felt like a very rich moment that could have been right those pundits if it failed it probably would have been some of those reasons but then how do you get to the point of saying it's the opposite well, right. I mean, since you've seen some, so many of those waves of social media and worked with a lot of those companies, what do you see happening now? I mean, Facebook is so dominant. Um, they have Instagram now. Um, what, what, what do you see happening next in social media? What are you excited about? You know, I think, um, I think mobile is an incredibly exciting area, and, and obviously Instagram is a great company that we're involved with that plays in that too. Um, and that's going to change everything. It's going to change things on the enterprise side. It's going to change things on the consumer side in ways that we can't even imagine. Um, and so what I find is when a new kind of paradigm or usage capability comes in, you find all the old stuff rechanges. So commerce is going to change because of mobile. And social will change because of mobile. Information sharing is changing because of mobile. And that's where these really exciting things happen. Um, you know, I think um, another big change is massive amounts of data that we can now analyze and collect and cause delight, our, delight the user with, you know, and so there's this whole trend towards anticipating what a user might want and helping them get to it faster. And those things are just going to accelerate. And mobile, being able to get to what you want wherever you are at the moment, I think we're hitting a whole another level on that. Can you talk about the entrepreneurs that you look for? And, and I guess I wanted to ask you, just as an example, when you met Mark Zuckerberg or when you met um, one of your other CEOs early on, what, what do you see in them? What do you look for in them um, as founders and um, of companies? You know, I look for smarts. I mean, I consider basic smarts are pretty darn important. I look for a passion about what they're doing. They've got to love this. This has got to be their mission in life. Um, and, and I also look for um, a conviction and a sense of um, high standards and not being afraid. And every time they have the courage to go, I believe in what I'm doing, I'm going to keep going. And that's a hard thing to do. Um, yeah. The last one I look for is um, people that are continual learners and want to get good advice and mentors. They pick interesting people to be their mentors and advisors. You look at a Reed Hoffman, 
classically does that. Look at a Mark Zuckerberg. You know, he puts really interesting people around him that aren't just like him, but he knows I can learn something and I need to keep getting better and I need to prove because this vision is too great not to keep going. And that's rare. That, that is really interesting. Um, can you talk a little bit about uh, the venture industry? I mean, Greylock is, is growing a lot. It's, you brought in Reed, who's yep. doing a lot of the seed part of the, the spectrum, but can you talk about what you're seeing in the industry? What, what do you think is changing and where it's going? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, when I, when I joined in the beginning of, of the century, it was like 99, you know, it was a very kind of traditional business where you had a lot of folks that were, had been enterprise investors, now VC, saying, okay, I can invest in consumer. And if you fast forward 12 years, it's dramatically changed. Yeah. What you saw really switch, uh, and I think my partner, Neil, was one of the first ones to, who was a change to this model was, you know, Neil was a senior executive at PeopleSoft, had been there since it was really small and grown up, and you brought someone in directly as a partner. And you said, this person has deep understanding of startups, has deep understanding of their domain, and our instincts is going to be a great investor, and we're going to teach them the VC business, but they come with great instincts about what startups are and how to build them, because that's what really helps build great companies. That's what also helps you have the instinct about, this one's a good one, great person to back, great opportunity. This one may look good on the surface, but when you get two levels down, the risks overwhelm. The, the, this is a no. This one is a yes.